Hi, welcome to the second lesson in spelling, punctuation and grammar, which we're actually um, going to make into sentences, punctuation and grammar, um, as spelling will be done by individual feedback. So we're going to start with a little bit of revision today. The date is Monday the 11th of January. Um, and don't forget, it's 2021 now. Um, we're just going to do a little bit of revision from our last uh, spelling, punctuation and grammar video. Um, that major video, which includes everything you need to know, is elsewhere on my YouTube channel further down because it was made some time ago in the summer. Um, if you need to revise all your spelling, punctuation and grammar, please watch that previous video. Um, the um, surrounding is brown in colour um, rather than green like this one. So um, the questions we're going to use to revise are how do you lengthen sentences, six places where commas are used, where are apostrophes not used, very important to remember that, and where are apostrophes used. So having uh, prepared the answers to that, um, these are the lesson objectives. We're going to revise punctuation, so you've had those questions already, so hopefully you're looking up the answers to those questions, which obviously we will discuss shortly. Um, we're going to look at a piece of um, my own student's creative writing, which was written last year, and analyse that, and see why it's so good. And um, we're going to look at um, writing sentences of different type, structure and length. So how do you lengthen sentences? Pause the video while you have a think and then all will be revealed. You lengthen sentences by using a semicolon if the sentences are related. You can use a joining word to make it compound or complex. And to make a complex sentence, you can use extra information, obviously using commas around that extra information. So, which are the six places where commas are used? Have a think. Stop the video while you have a think and then the answer will be revealed. So, it's in lists A, B and C. Before, after or around signpost words like however or therefore before, after or around extra information, which does not stand on its own because it's not a full sentence. Before or after quotations. Before fanboys joining words, which you will have learnt about in the other video. Between full sentences when the joining word is at the start, such as if, which you will have seen in the previous video. So where are apostrophes not used? Stop the video while you have a think. Apostrophes are not used in its possessive, for example, its how or its, its length. And apostrophes are not used in plurals, for example, apples, kittens or lessons. Where are apostrophes used? They're used in possession after the owner. For example, the cat's whiskers and the apostrophe would go between cat and s as the owner is the cat. Contraction, missing letters such as o, clock or won't. In o'clock between the o and the clock, won't in between the n and the t. Sentence forms. Very important that you vary your sentences to make your writing interesting. If they all have the same structure, it becomes very dull. Here are some examples. As you can see, there are lots of ways of starting sentences. Try and mix them up to give variety. It's time to relax is a simple sentence. A compound sentence would be it's time to relax, relax and it's time to think about the future with the joining word 
A complex sentence. Whatever you've been doing, comma, it's time to relax. Whatever you've been doing is not a sentence alone and doesn't stand on its own. A minor sentence, really, no verb. Split with a semicolon, it's time to relax, semicolon. It's time to think about the future. Note that you cannot do that with a comma. Start your sentence with a verb, relax, and think about the future. Start your sentence with an adverb, comfortably relax and think about the future. Start your sentence with a noun, the future deserves some consideration. Start your sentence with an adjective, the unforeseeable future should be planned. Use a quotation, relax, he said, and plan your future. How do we use different sentences? As you can see, there are lots of different reasons for um, using different sorts of sentences. So you can emphasize, vary your sentences, which is very important um, to explain, report dialogue and link ideas. So a simple sentence would be used for emphasis and to end or vary sentences. A compound sentence would be to vary sentences and a complex sentence would be to explain and don't forget to use a comma around the extra information where necessary. A minor sentence is for impact, emphasis and to end, start and vary sentences. Split with a semicolon to link ideas and vary your sentences. You can start with a verb, adverb, noun and adjective to make your sentences variable and use quotations to report opinions. This is a piece of uh, creative writing which got um, a grade nine written by a student last year of mine. Um, it's very good and um, for most of the rest of the lesson we will be analysing this piece of writing to look at its features um, so that you have some inspiration for um, what you're going to be writing later in the week. This is called The Beach. Angry water splashes against my feet and legs as I'm standing on the edge of the rocks, water licking at my feet. The rock is a razor, cutting the soles of my feet. I'm standing on the edge, looking down at what life has given me. The deep waters are calling, luring me to step closer. Relentless accusations of not good enough, not, spart not smart enough and not skinny enough are slapping against the walls between land and water, splashing, slashing and struggling against the currents of life. Pulling back into the darkest deepness, the water swirls into an abyss of thoughts. Familiar faces, whispers of gossip and friendly cunning smiles all whirl together in this black pool of withering water, foaming, frothing and laughing as I stumble and fall. Time is standing still as the seconds tick by. Feeling light and weightless, I fall towards the welcoming arms of the waves, which give me a cold, chilling embrace as they pull me under. The noise of the voice is far away on the surface, splashing and spluttering as another world that I don't belong to. The current pulls me back and back and I float willingly to its deepness. I open my eyes and only see darkness, but then I see a flicker of light. There is blackness, then a flash, like an old camera that takes photos of moments never to be forgotten. Flash, my mother's smile. Flash, the house next to the river. Hope flashes before my eyes as the lighthouse looks over the sea. The water is pulling and pushing me as my lungs burn, with holding my breath. Pulling and pushing and lifting as the deep darkness repels me from the nothingness. It shoves me towards the surface, urging me to find life and purpose. Breath bursts through as the water breaks open, freeing me from the fighting, drowning feeling, like taking off a heavy coat that was dragging me down. I'm free from the fighters and the foes, floating as the water carries me, cleansed, ashore. So what's good about this piece of creative writing from one of my learners last year? Think about how the writer has used the topic, which is called the beach, the overall structure and organisation, the tone changes and the language techniques. So the objectives were to have revised punctuation, to have analysed a piece of creative student writing and to be able to write sentences of different type, structure and length.